Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AdamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at Le Chatelier's principle. Now Le Chatelier was named after the uh, French chemist Henri Louis Le Chatelier and he was the uh, chemist who basically came up with a principle to explain what happens when we put a uh, change on an equilibrium system and that change of conditions could be something like temperature, pressure or concentration and, and that's what we're going to look at in a minute. Um, now, uh, Le Chatelier's principle, basically what he said, is he said that if there's a change in concentration, temperature or pressure uh, to a reaction, then equilibrium will shift to oppose the change. So it's rather like a very annoying person. So when you tell that person to do one thing, they'll do the complete opposite. So this is what equilibrium reactions will do. You will impose a change on it and it will uh, try to reverse that change that you've just done on it. So, um, we're basically going to look at the conditions that are involved in this as well and, and talk about which way equilibrium is going to move. Now, um, this principle is, is useful because it helps us to explain what's going on, but what Le Chatelier's principle doesn't tell us is how far equilibrium will move, and it doesn't tell us um, about the quantities that we can produce on, in these reactions either. So there are limitations to it, but his principle is incredibly useful nonetheless, especially in industry. Uh, when we can um, use uh, these conditions or change the conditions to actually um, increase our yield of products. Uh, and if we can do that, then obviously the company can make more money from it. So it's an incredibly useful principle. And he came up with it back in the 1800s as well. So a very old principle as well. Okay, so we're going to start with um, looking at some of the conditions that we can change. So we can do things like temperature, we can do pressure, and we can do concentration. Um, so we're going to start with temperature first. So imagine we've got this reaction here, and I'm going to keep it quite generic, but in the exam, uh, you may have a very specific example, so just be aware of that. But this is A plus B, and this will give C plus D. Now you can see that this reaction has an enthalpy value of minus 300 kilojoules per mole. Now that minus value tells us that this reaction must be exothermic. Um, and in the exam, they will give you a reaction, and next to it, you'll have an enthalpy value. So if they want you to comment on the temperature of the reaction, they must give you that. Um, or you must have worked it out in a previous question. You can't explain or, or say what's happening to the uh, equilibrium with regards to temperature without that value. So what that number means is it actually tells us in the forward direction, so going from A, A B, C, D, um, that actually the forward direction is exothermic. And that's what I've put on that arrow there with the little red uh, arrow, which means exothermic. And then on the backwards direction, the forward direction is exothermic, then the backwards direction has got to be endothermic, which means this takes heat in from the surroundings uh, to allow the reaction to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of testing on this. So we're going to see what happens when we heat this particular reaction up and what happens when we cool it down. And we're going to explain it in terms of um, where the equilibrium will shift to and uh, we'll explain it in terms of Le Chatelier's principle as well. So that's what we'll be after in the exam. So we're going to heat this up. So let's say we take this reaction, we heat it up. Um, by adding heat to the reaction, according to Le Chatelier's principle, it will oppose the change. So it will change to cool the reaction back down. So therefore, it will shift in the endothermic direction, which means it will shift to the left. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put the heat. So we're going to put equilibrium. I'll shorten it to EQM, which is equilibrium. Uh, and that will shift to the left. Now, what this means is that you will actually um, you produce more uh, reactants than you will products. So if you were in the industry and you wanted to produce more product, uh, then um, this reaction, and this was the reaction that you were doing, then you would not heat the reaction um, because actually you'll get less product that way, even though the rate will increase, because when you heat something up, the rate will increase, the actual amount of the yield of product will actually go down. And if we cool the reaction down, it's just the same. So we take the system, we cool it down. The reaction, according to Le Chatelier's principle, will oppose the change by heating itself back up again. So heating means it'll shift in the exothermic direction. That means it's shifting to the right. So therefore, equilibrium in this case uh, will shift to the right. Now, this is only true for this reaction if it's exothermic. And if we come to this one, now we've got another reaction here, which is endothermic. Again, we're going to put our arrows on to show what's happening. So this reaction going in the forward direction, because this value here always tells you what it is going in the forward direction. This is endothermic. So put endo on there. And then going backwards, 
uh, this reaction, if it's endo going forwards, it's got to be exo going backwards, so exothermic. Uh, and again, we're going to add our, um, we're going to do the test on it as well. So if we heat this particular reaction up, heating the reaction up means we're adding heat to the reaction. So the reaction will move to cool itself back down. It will do the opposite, according to Tillier's principle. The cooling down process is endothermic, so it will go in the forward direction. So heating this reaction up, actually equilibrium will shift to the right. So heating this reaction up means you produce more products than you do reactants. Uh, and obviously if we go in the other way, we're cooling the reaction down, and the reaction will warm itself, will, will shift to warm itself back up again. That will move in the exothermic direction because it's heat warming back up. So it moves in the exothermic direction. So equilibrium in this case will shift to the left. Okay, so these ones are really common. So the temperature ones can be a little bit confusing, but it is important that you look at the number first that they've given you, identify what's exo and what's endo, and then make sure that whatever it tells you in the question, you do the opposite and you shift your equilibrium and the opposite to what it's telling you. So if it says heat, you shift it in the cool down, which is the endothermic position. Okay, so if we go into the next one, which is pressure. So pressure is... Uh, to do with gases only, and this is actually relatively straightforward. You've just got to watch out for a few things, though. So you can see we've got A plus B uh, will give 2C plus D. Uh, all of these reactants here are gases, so all we're doing is we are looking at the number of moles of gas on the left and the right. And you can see on this side, we have two moles of gas on this side, and on the right-hand side, we have three moles of gas. So let's say in this case, Let's say if we increase the pressure, okay, uh, effectively what happens is um, it will shift, equilibrium will shift uh, to the side of the fewest number of gas moles to try and reduce the pressure that you've put on it. So in this case, uh, this will shift to the left because you can see we've got two moles of gas here, three moles of gas here, increasing the pressure, equilibrium will shift to try and reduce the pressure which means shifting to the side of the fewest number of gaseous moles. So in this case, it will shift to the left. Okay, and if we decrease the pressure, then um, the equilibrium will shift to try and increase the pressure, uh, and the, uh, that means that it will shift to the side of the most number of gaseous molecules. So in this case, we've got three on the right and two on the left, so this one will shift to the right. So I'll put that on there. Okay, now you just got to watch out for some of these ones as well. If you look at this one here in particular, you can see that we've got, um, let me just see, I'll just put this one on there. Uh, you can see that we've got um, two on this side and then three moles on this side. But if you look at the number of gaseous molecules, we actually have only two, one on the left and one on the right. The rest are solids. Solids don't play a part in the pressure. So it is important that you're only looking at the gaseous molecules. You don't fall into that trap um, where you'll say, oh, well, you've got three on that side and two on that side, and then apply the same principle there. You're only looking for gaseous molecules. In this case, we have uh, one mole on each side, so therefore um, actually altering the pressure has no effect on equilibrium. So we're going to put that on there. Okay, so really, really, really important uh, that you remember that point as well. Um, but you can see, relatively straightforward, a bit easier than temperature. We just look for that pressure difference. Okay, on to the last one, uh, which is concentration. So concentration is basically um, how many uh, moles of a, or how many molecules of a solution you have in a fixed volume, in a, in a defined volume. So um, the more concentrated something is, obviously the more particles you have in a fixed volume. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this reaction again. A plus B will give C plus D. If we increase the concentration of A or B, according to Alicia Tillier's principle, it will try and oppose the change. So it will move to try and decrease the concentration of A and B. So if I increase either that or that, then what it will do is it will shift to the right and use them up as best as it can. So you've got lots of A and B. It will try and react to remove them, so it will shift on the right-hand side. So it'll react them together to produce more product. So what effectively will happen here is equilibrium uh, will shift to the 
right hand side. So put that there. Okay, if we decrease the concentration of A or B, so if we remove A and B, the equilibrium will shift to try and increase them and put them back again. And the only way it can do that is by using up C and D and shifting to the left. So you can see on here that equilibrium will shift to the left. And what that means is you'll have less C and D and you'll have, uh, to well, to they'll, they'll mess these because these will react to produce A and B. So the amount of C and D will decrease. Okay, if we increase the concentration of C and D, so if we have more of this, um, then effectively the reaction, according to Chattelier's principle, will use them up. So this will shift to the left to use them uh, C and D up to produce more A and B. So equilibrium, in this case, will shift to the left and you'll produce uh, more reactants. And if we decrease the concentration of C or D, in other words, if we remove some of these, then equilibrium will shift to the right to put them back again to increase the concentration. So your reactants will be used up and you'll produce more product. So equilibrium will shift to the right. Now, it is important that you can talk about which way equilibrium is moving in these reactions uh, and also talk about the uh, amount of reactants and products that you will get as a result of these changes in equilibrium. Um, the chances are in the exam they'll, uh, they'll link it with a specific example. So for example, it might be um, the Haber process or the production of methanol or something like that. But um, just make sure that you can explain the different parts and you are talking about all the time about the change. What is it that you're changing? Why is it doing it? And which way is it moving? Um, and always refer back to Le Chatelier's principle as well when you're, when you're explaining your answers. These get quite a bit of marks in the exam. Just the final one here, which is catalysts. Uh, catalysts effectively have uh, no effect on the equilibrium. Um, they actually speed up the rate at which equilibrium is established. So putting a catalyst into this reaction will have no effect uh, in terms of um, altering the uh, position of equilibrium. It just means equilibrium is reached quicker. So this affects rate, not uh, equilibrium. But um, that's it. Quite a quite a handy little um, diagram basically to show you all three, but hope it helps. Bye.